So hello, Eurovision fam. It is just under 20 days until the contest. We're back with another <laughs> interview with the Eurovision 2024 representative from Portugal, Yolanda, who will be competing in the 14th spot in the first semifinal with the song Grito. So Yolanda, it's so good to see you again. How are you doing? Nice to, nice to see you again, Jordan. Thank you so much for the invitation. I'm super excited, super tired. Today is a, is a, it's been a long day, but I'm super excited to to have time to talk with you. So so yeah, thank you for for having me here. Yeah, absolutely. So um yeah, I did see you in Madrid. By now, you've performed <laughs> Grito a few times for audiences outside of <laughs> Portugal, especially the time I saw you in Madrid, which was fantastic. Uh, so yes. how how have the pre parties been treating you? Actually, I just went to the Madrid one. I'm I was sad because I couldn't go to any anymore. I'm preparing my mm. my next show. So when we come back from Eurovision, we're going to do this tour around Portugal and hopefully another um, like more European countries um, to start with. So we are very focused on that and very focused at, on the Eurovision. So so yeah, we couldn't make it to more parties, but the Madrid one was insane. Uh, it was my first one. Hopefully next year I can do, uh, I can get back my revenge and do a couple more. Um, but it's been, I don't know, it's been crazy. And the party was super fun. It was very, um, I think it was bigger than what I thought it, it would be. So so it was super, super nice to, to, to have that experience. Yeah, it, it was a really, um, I was surprised at how big of an event it was too, <laughs> because this was the first Eurovision pre-party that I've been to, so. Okay, cool, uh, so we were, we were new, we were new joiners together. <laughs> yeah, we were. <laughs> so uh, my second question, uh, the lyrics to Grito are, they're very self-empowering and encouraging, but the production I notice is very, it's very dark, it's very serious. It, it's almost like a, the contrast. I, I feel that very strongly. Can you tell me what the moment is that's being described by this song? Of course. First of all, thank you for saying Grito so well. Uh, oh your pronunciation God. is amazing. You I'm should get a word for that. <laughs> uh, the, the moment I think that brought me to to wanting to do a, a serious version of the song i guess it's because i'm i'm talking about something serious to me uh when i talk about believing in myself it's not exactly um like a cliche way of saying believe in yourself but a really true true one because i really need to 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 say this to myself in order to to become better uh, as a person as a friend as a as an artist as a professional uh, so i think like i'm i'm literally saying to myself that i am worth uh, value I am worth love as a woman as a as a creative as a person as a human being and also that I need to forget somebody that like people that do us uh bad during our our uh, life events so sometimes like we it happens that you have situations that don't exactly align with your expectations and you have to to deal with them and just be just be grateful for the opportunities and grateful for the overcoming tools you get uh, when you are growing. So so yeah, I think it's basically a song of, of self empowerment, of self confidence, um, and a song to bring light as much as possible. The darkness around it, I think, it's because it's a for me it's a very strong message, and I really like I'm I'm a, I'm a Scorpio, so I I'm like eight or eighty, so I guess I went for the eighty in the song. In what comes to eight oh eight to synths, to um, even the percussions, the violins, the drama, the epicness. I really wanted to do something like this for a long time, so I thought, okay, national selection in Portugal for for Eurovision. I guess it's the moment, and we did it. <laughs> Ah, very nice. It's also interesting how you said you were a Scorpio, because I kind of feel ah! those vibes a little bit in the production. Really? <laughs> yeah, a little oh, bit. Wow. But my, my producer is a Leo. But I guess it's, maybe there's there's some alignment with the with the star signs. I'm not like I I like it. I like them, but I don't know like a lot. Yeah, neither do I, but oh well. <laughs> So um, talking a little bit more about the lyrics, to reference your second verse, and this is just a translation that I read from Portuguese, but um, in the second verse, the translation says, today I want to prove myself that I can be whatever I want, gather those who love me around a table, forgive those who wanted to see me suffer. So I thought that was pretty important in this song. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice for people who are letting go of old pain or having trouble doing that? I guess for me, uh, what I did with the, with my situation, it's not exactly like for me. Like there was events that were happening during my my life, especially 
becoming an artist, I think we 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 kind of go through those moments of self-discoverment. I don't know if that's a word, but like when we are writing about ourselves, uh, sometimes it's kind of an egocentric trip uh, when we are writing about ourselves. And I think I was trying to do that, but I couldn't because I, I also knew that I, I, I didn't know myself that well. Uh, so I guess we should, as as human beings and as as creators, do do an effort to 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 search for for help, even outside of ourselves. You know, like therapy is an amazing is an amazing way of discovering yourself. Uh, there's tons and tons of of techniques uh, to you know, like to to search for therapy. So I guess like I started with hypnotherapy actually. Um, I don't know exactly if the, if it's a um, a thing for me because I like I don't love playing. So I was like you know like trying to deal with it as well. So I thought hmm, I can combine everything and just be just trying to take care of myself uh, in um, in a bowl. Uh, but but I guess you know just just be true to yourself just listen to your friends uh, just surround yourself with people that you like and don't exactly spend that much time thinking about who did you wrong because they are the ones that have the evil in their heart so you know like you should follow your heart and your ideas even if sometimes they seem very crazy probably they are they are right to you and that's that's what matters <laughs> wow very well said so um kind of taking it from the lyrics and moving it to just the whole song what's your relationship with grito versus your other art so let's say you're for example your 2023 project cura or something earlier than that what's the difference between grito and your previous art i think my previous art was something that i polished i've been polishing it uh since i was like i don't know like 17 i've started writing my own songs when i was around that age like 16 17 uh, but i i've waited not because I was, maybe because I was insecure, I guess, but also at the same time, I was trying to to be exactly sure of the sound I wanted to sound, you know, the the song, the songs I wanted to to be introduced to an audience. Uh, so that's why I've waited a couple of years to to make it public. But then at the same time, um, Grito has um, has this power of connecting all of the elements that I have in Cura but like putting them in the maximum exponential moment. So it's kind of like the culmination of all of the research, the songs, the, the performance um, things that I've been learning since I've started being a singer, whatever that means. Uh, so it's kind of like um, just the, the com combination that, that joining all of the pieces and having a... Um, a whole, a whole um, like diamond that I want to keep in this little box forever. <laughs> uh, is it hard to kind of take all of your expertise and experience and condense it down into just three minutes? Like, is, do you find a challenge doing it is, that? <laughs> it is very challenging. But actually, when we were like in studio, like preparing production and going back and forth with ideas, like the song never, it was never bigger than two minutes 47, if I'm not wrong. So like the the song was always, uh, it didn't have less or more, you know, that was the perfect uh, momentum to finish the song at two minutes 47. But obviously if there wasn't rules with the time, uh, maybe we could have done like, I don't know, a different part C, we could have, you know, explored in different BPMs. Uh, there there was so many changes, but it was difficult to condense like all of the information. I guess I went, like I had moments where, where I couldn't decide what to write. And I was so, you know, like worried, what am I going to put here? Second verse, I want to say this and that. How am I going to say that in a short period of time? But I guess like... We've made it and I'm super excited with the song and I couldn't take anything else. So, yeah. Wow. All right. So, yeah, this this is the product that we're going to uh, hear compete. And this is this is this is it. This is the ready moment. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> so uh, before you head off to Malma, um, what about your Eurovision journey has impacted you the most so far? I guess uh, understanding that I don't have enough time to to connect with like everybody that I want to connect I guess mm. that's the that's the thing that I like I, I knew that this has an, an amazing exposure which means there, there are going to be tons and tons of people uh, new people in my life uh from day to day but I like I I I hate that we don't have enough time as human beings to know everybody in the world. So I'm like, ah, 
why <laughs> do we have to leave this earth? It's so cool. Uh, so I guess that's the for me the most difficult thing to understand that that time goes fast and that the moments are going fast. But at the same time, like I'm enjoying so much. Uh, so I think like that doesn't exactly matter, and I'm just gonna enjoy that best I can and and just take everything with me. So so yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you've also had the opportunity too to make friends with a couple of the other contestants. So yeah, in Madrid, we we actually we actually talked with a lot of uh, a lot of contestants, and myself obviously tried to to connect with as as much as them as possible. I've been I've been super excited to go back to Malmo so I can review some of their faces and meet the new ones that I don't know yet. Uh, and I guess like there in in Malmo, it's it's a place where we're gonna connect even more because we're gonna be there for more days it's not going to be running all the time preparing makeup doing fittings doing sound check doing whatever the hell we do yeah so <laughs> it's kind of crazy but but yeah i'm super i'm super super excited nice and uh, i just have one more question for you uh will you dedicate your semi-final performance to anyone would i dedicate my semi i think i think i'm going to dedicate it to my younger self i think your that's younger self gonna... yes ah okay yes. I think she deserves to to uh, believe in herself more, or she deserved, and and I think she was so loved by her parents, by her by other family family members, friends, and I think um, the world itself is sometimes so messed up. And obviously, I talk I talk from a privileged position uh, because I am definitely a privileged person, and I know and I'm aware of that. Uh, but I do believe that. Yeah, I don't know. We should we should heal our inner self uh, with with happy moments and moments of of conquer. So yeah, I'm super excited to to represent my country and super grateful uh, so that I can heal my little young Yolanda uh, when she was feeling insecure. <laughs> wow, that's beautiful. Well, I think younger Yolanda will find quite a bit of happiness in where current Yolanda is. I think so. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah, that's the end of my questions.